I'm Sarah Wyman. And I'm Phil Wyman. Between us, we have investigated countless locations in our search for proof of the paranormal. We are invited to question the unexplained, to uncover what may be lurking in the shadows. With many reported hauntings throughout the UK, no two investigations are the same. Now, together with a team of experienced investigators, we continue to seek evidence to prove whether a haunting can be validated or not. From a selection of cases we each receive, we will come together to pick the most interesting and ask the question, Are you haunted? So this is the uh, venue I'm bringing to the table. A really interesting place, and I so hope we get a chance to investigate it. So, this is my venue. Very strange things going off in this cafe, so fingers crossed it gets picked. Okay, here we are, nice uh, haunted dwelling. Sounds extremely interesting, this one. Uh, I hope we do get to do this one. Well, I've chosen my venue to investigate and I'm going with the Haunted Inn. To me, it sounds more interesting. The cafe didn't sound too bad. Again, it sounded interesting, but yeah, I had a set the cafe. Okay. Yeah. I think the dwelling sounds really interesting. There seems to be a lot happening there. Okay, Sarah? Definitely the Haunted Inn for me. All right, and Jane? Gotta be the inn for me. Uh, okay, so it looks like then, sorry Tim and Ben, well, it's the Haunted Inn. Whose was the Haunted Inn? It was mine. Well done, nice one. So it looks like we're going to spend the night in a haunted inn. Plenty of spirits. Spooky stuff. Situated beside the River Nid in Knaresborough, North Yorkshire, Jane's case file brings us to the Mother Shipton Inn. The 16th century inn is full of history, with parts of the building being Grade 1 listed. Its name pays homage to Ursula Southiel, a famous English prophetess who resided in nearby caves in the late 15th and early 16th century. Having more recently undergone a new refurbishment, the inn reopened its doors in October 2017. With an abundance of strange occurrences taking place, we caught up with three witnesses to find out more. It was a friend's 40th, so we were reforming the band we were in um, to play a gig at the Mother Shipton's pub here. And we were practicing in this room on the stage behind, well, I say stage, the raised bit behind us. And yeah, so we were practicing one night and just just in front of me there, we were just playing a song and I just noticed out of the corner of my eye two people stood down here watching us in the, it was dark, the lights were off. Um, but it was the movement that caught, caught my eye at first. And I got a bit nervous and thought, oh God, there's two people watching us, which I wasn't prepared for just then, you know. So I looked away and we carried on playing the song. 
And then when we'd finished, the, I looked down and the two people had gone, which I thought was strange because the door had never opened. Um, and we'd, the old landlord had given us a blanket to put over the door so that it said so no, no one came in and disturbed us. And generally when you open that door, it fell off. Uh, so that didn't happen and the it was only after we'd finished I was about to say did anyone see those two people stood down there and the bassist said the exact same thing and he's a skeptic in all you know spirits and paranormal stuff so I thought it was interesting that he'd said um, that he'd seen them these two figures you know like that with a sort of a wide brimmed hat the guy there's a man and a woman definitely a man and a woman and he had a long sort of trench coat sort of thing, like like they'd been in a, a long journey, like a coat, you know, coach or something. And the woman had a long dress on. But uh, yeah, it was just the movement, how they moved that caught my eye and I thought they were real. And then obviously they just disappeared. The history behind the pub, uh, Mother Ships and Zinn, uh, goes back to the 16th century. It was an old coaching house and it was formerly known as a dropping well uh, because in the, in the beer garden uh, near the river there used to be a well there, hence the name the dropping well, but uh, it's full of history and uh, a lot of characters to the pub as well. And the pub itself was built again around the 16th century and they, uh, they used to come through the, through the cave uh, to the watering hole, which was, as then, the dropping well, uh, which is now the Mothership Sins Inn. In the pub itself, uh, there was a couple sat next to the fireplace in question, and uh, they happened to look into the fireplace, and they saw this, this hand, uh, and it looked like it was going up the, up the chimney flue. So they, uh, they, they managed to get a picture of it, and obviously when the picture was developed, you could actually make out the hand actually going into, into the fireplace. Being a skeptic myself, uh, although I don't, didn't disbelieve, I, was, I needed convincing that obviously you know, something was happening. And I remember uh, <clears throat> one evening, it was a Friday evening, uh, I was serving a couple of gentlemen at the bar, and uh, I saw, uh, all I can describe is somebody dressed in black going up towards our private quarters. Initially, I thought somebody's lost uh, looking for the, for the bathroom. So I actually broke off serving these two guys and said, excuse me guys, I just need to go uh, and chase this person. I think they're looking for the loo and they're going in the wrong place. I, I went to the stairs, went up the stairs, nobody there. There was another little incident. Uh, I was serving at the bar, uh, the other bar, which is, is next to, to uh, two separate bars. And I heard, what I thought was a glass falling over. So I walked round to see two guys with uh, startled looks on their faces. And I said, are you okay guys? And they said, Tony, you're not gonna believe this. And there was a plate basically on the wall behind me where I'm sat now, and it propelled itself from that wall uh, to, the, to the door, which ran about eight, eight foot away. Uh, the, place was, uh, the plate was in one piece uh, and they, they they was absolutely mortified looking, they were so surprised, uh, but they couldn't explain it. We've been here since March this year. Um, and I'll, I'll be perf perfectly honest with you, when we first came here, um, I'd, we, we'd been told stories from customers and things, but you take a lot of it on the chin. We're usually very black and white. Um, if somebody says something, usually I take it with a pinch of salt. But since we've been here, there's been a few occurrences where I've, so I don't have a black and white explanation for it. There isn't anything specific you can sort of pin it down to. So. Um, it's certainly broadened my horizons anyway. <laughs>
one afternoon, um, my mum, who stays with us three days a week, we were we were at the top of the stairs of the flat, just talking about something mundane, and um, Tony had just turned to go downstairs, and I turned to go into the other room. And um, I heard this gasping noise, and heard my mum, I heard her, you know, put her hand against the wall, and one of the dogs who we have as a coward just ran straight down the stairs after Tony, you couldn't see his backside for dust. The other one, she, she went straight down on the floor, all her heckles are up, and she's full on defense growling mode, and. I, I turned and looked at my mum's face and she was white as a sheet. The dog took off straight down the corridor, which, which runs the full length of the pub. It's, it's quite a distance to go. And um, she stopped just at the boundary of the living room and she's down, all the heckles are up, her teeth are showing, she's full on snarling. And I thought, like, you know, I, I can't do anything to calm her down. You know, I don't know how she's going to react if I touch her. Um, so in the end, we had to put the lead on her and put her outside so she, she'd calm down. But speaking to my mum afterwards, she said somebody came from the room where the safe is kept through to the living room. She says it was just just like a black form. She, she couldn't give me a better description of that. She just said blacker than black with nothing kind of. That was the only distinctive thing about it. When we first opened um, to the public, we heard a few incidents with a table, um, funnily enough, where the, the photograph was taken with the hand, um, glasses that would just come off the table. Um, and um, I was stood there with one of the waitresses, and both of us saw the glass move. <laughs> that sounds really crazy. Um, but the glass didn't go down the table. It wasn't, it wasn't as if it aquaplaned from the moisture off the glass or anything. It, it went upwards. And every time the glass comes off the table, it, um, it never breaks, it just makes a mess. <laughs> this table was purchased from Scotton Hall, which is where Guy Fawkes used to live in 1592. And this, it's a, well, it's a documented piece of furniture. Um, it's been with the pub for a long, long time. Um, not quite from the beginning, but near as close to it. So it's very much part of the furniture. Um, we, we've had one or two <laughs> incidents around it. We even have customers that refuse to sit at the table. <laughs> um, we had a, a group of guys in one day um, drinking red wine and I think one of them was telling a joke or something stupid like that and the glass just cracked and went all over the table and again as, as, as before with the other table nobody was touching it. So who is Mothership? What What's the story? Well, Mother Shipton um, is a very famous lady, if you like. Um, she was born way back in 1488. Um, apparently she was born in the cave just behind this pub. Her actual name is Ursula. Apparently she wasn't very, a very pretty child. Quite unfortunate, um, twisted legs, sort of a hunched back. As she was growing up, she, she gained a bit of a reputation to, as being a bit of a soothsayer and, and she made predictions and a little bit of a, a witch, if you like. So this pub actually used to be called The Dropping Well. Yeah. And from what I remember, the landlord said that there is actually a well that's under the floor. And the original the floor, well. Yeah, yeah. 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 So the, the family here, and it's uh, still sort of intact to this day, but well under the floorboards, is it? And also, we've got this table as well, haven't we? Wow, uh, yeah. This is yeah. The, yeah, the gap, the Guy Fawkes table. This table from Scotton Hall belonged to Guy Fawkes when he resided there in the year 1592. Very strange. Yes. Because there's a lot of weird stuff apparently associated with this table. Such like? Uh, people, some people that come into the pub won't actually sit here. Right, okay. What, make, make yes. it regulars? Yeah, right, okay. They don't know. Um, and there's, there's frequently reports of things like glasses moving um, and uh, the table kind of making weird kind of vibrations and things like that. Um, now, this obviously used to be uh, belong to Guy Fawkes and Guy Fawkes was best known for trying to get rid of <laughs> King James I with the gunpowder plot. Yes. So, I've actually bought printed out a picture of James the First. Okay. James the First. Oh, yeah. um, and uh, <laughs> we're going to leave it on the table. 
um, and we'll see if anything actually happens. And we're going to leave these glasses here as well. Right guys, so this photograph is the whole reason we are here. Just before the refurb um, a few weeks ago, a couple were in here, quite a regular couple. Um, the wife had a, a normal phone camera, whipped it out, took a photograph, and apparently she has caught an apparition. I don't know if you can see. The hands. Yeah, there. there's some hands yeah. apparently there. So what I'd like to do, if you don't mind, Dale, being our resident photographer, I wondered if you and Sarah could try and recreate the photograph. But okay. this fireplace is obviously different. Yeah, the, in the refurb, they've changed the fireplace, they've changed the mirror, but the actual area itself, and it's the original building, it's great unlisted, so they've not physically changed anything else. And this table is apparently where glasses have fallen from it? Yeah, that's right. Um, they move on their own, apparently, and, and come off. Um, sometimes they smash, sometimes they don't. But there's a lot of activity, apparently, around this area, so see what we can get if it's all right yeah all right so do you want me to be the hands <laughs> yes okay. um if you can stand directly in front of the mirror okay i think that's the best end one i'm gonna get okay sarah if you could just put your hand out for me uh, to the around so it's that way because that's the way to me this way but uh, yeah that's yeah. the way it looks to me on the original photo okay. um come a step towards me the hand looks quite close to the lens that's about right maybe a bit lower yeah perfect right i'm going to set it on a one second exposure when I press the button, yeah. pull your hand away slowly, but within a second. I think this photo, and, and it shows, you can see a reflection in the mirror. Yeah. I think it's just a person's hand. And you think it's the exposure? Yeah. Yeah. Because it's it's a dark pub. Um, the photo won't be a quick photo in a dark location. So I think it's just a long exposure and someone's just been talking Let's do and it. And move the hand out. Okay. So okay. that's what I want to try and recreate. I think that's what it is. Might not be, but. Okay. There we go. If you guys can see that. Oh, uh, yeah. All right. You can see my hand here. Yeah. Yes. That's what I deem it to be. It's different light, obviously. Yeah. The colour You've and got the brick colour, so, a different size mirror, a lighter background. But there. in terms but of the hand here, now what you've got that you've got more of a wave on that as well. Yeah. Now what we've done it as is you, your this was a steady hand moving out. That wouldn't have been that, but it's hard to recreate what they were doing. Would that happen? With a camera phone, in, because uh, of yes, the light. As far as the photograph is concerned, we all think that this is a rational explanation. I think it's agreed. From what we've done, I don't think that photo is paranormal. But having said that, that doesn't explain all the other occurrences that yeah. have been taking place here. Yeah. There's an awful lot of other reports that we need to look into. Absolutely. Yeah. While she was filming the photo footage over there, I heard like a twang of metal over here, like someone flicks a metallic thing or hit it hard, but that doesn't sound at all right and neither does that, that's way too soft. And this is not, no, still not the right sound. It sounds like someone here with a lot of force and it definitely came from this area. Okay, so we're here now with uh, myself and Ben, obviously, and we're gonna do a vigil here, and hopefully we can get some kind of interaction from whatever's haunting this venue. It's the person that knocked the mirror off the wall in the ladies, present in this area. Leave us a message, will you? Tell 
Not sure yet. I'm not sure. I was, I was looking on the camera of what's looking at you. And I've got the door in that leads through to the corridor and the other family room. Yeah. And I could see through the the door into that room and saw so moving about. Uh, they looked to be moving about on the floor level. to the camera, there was no one on the camera in that vicinity. So wherever they are, they're on the, up the steps and they're on the upper level in there, yeah. but it doesn't add up why I saw something through the door in that room when there was no one in that bit of space. Yeah. I don't know, I mean, they may look back at this and say, oh, it's, it was this or it was that, but uh, yeah, a little bit weird. You okay? Cold. Come on. If you're here, the Victorian people, the couple who have been seen in this room. And I just noticed out of the corner of my eye, two people stood down here watching us in the, it was dark, the lights were off. Why don't you show yourself, show yourself to us. What were you doing here? Did you used to come to this venue when you were alive? Okay, I'm doing an EVP session as we speak using this device here. Okay, is there anyone here with us? Can you give us your name, please? What are you doing here when you come to visit? What happened to you? Peggy, are you here? Can you come and say hello to us? Come and talk to us. Everywhere. The, on the table, there's always everywhere. It's just that fireplace one, isn't it? I don't know. Very obviously, there could just be dust. Well, yeah, it is obviously one. I would it's say it's had a recent refurb and full paint job. You think there'd be a little less? Come and speak to us if you're here. Can you let us know that you are here with us? Is the presence known as Peggy. Are you here in this room with us? Different. Um, 
<laughs> what was that? Jane and I had just entered the ladies' toilets when we heard a rather unusual noise. What was that? We are not sure where this noise comes from, and we didn't hear it again. <laughs> Seriously, I can only see like this screen, and it's like pitch black. Why are you here? What do you want in this room? Did you say something? No. As I reached the top of the stairs, I distinctly heard what sounded like a female whisper. Unfortunately, it is quite difficult to make out, occurring just as I stopped moving. Did you say something? Are you sure? Yeah. Did you hear anything? Was it a step? No. It was like a whisper. I just heard uh, a definite whisper when I was coming up the stairs here, just as I've been asking out for the woman and the child. Um, so I'm going to try and ask it out again. In fact, I'm going to walk up the stairs just to make sure it wasn't the stairs. I'm pretty sure it wasn't. Okay. Right, just done the same thing. Nothing, no noise. Definitely nothing that sounded like a whisper. And it was head height for me. Um, I'm just gonna have to check the footage back on that and obviously have a listen to it again. No, actually, it's like you said, I don't think the building feels particularly bad. It's nothing like that. It's quite a warm feeling. It's, it's just knowing so much has gone on and I've had a few strange noises here. We tend to find that you get ha things happen probably more than when you actually ask for it. Wait, look at me. I'm throat. <laughs> Ben's haunted throat. <laughs> Come on, Peggy. If you're here, speak to me. How old are you? Did you die in these rooms, in these walls, in this building? We heard that you don't like children. Well, there's one just there. So let him know how much you like him. Slap him round the face. We heard you don't like children. Well, there's one just there. 
as well just there. No, let him know how much you like him. Slap him round the face. Yeah, well, we were in the barn room, as we call it, uh, where the um, figures of a woman and a child, crying child, has been seen. And uh, I was just asking out. I basically said, uh, if uh, the lady with the child is here, you need to speak to me to try and you know, let me know that you, you're here. Um, and just literally a few seconds after I said that, I started walking up the stairs, about five stairs to the top landing. Uh, and as I got to the top step, something whispered in my ear. Did you just say something? No. Are you sure? And I swear to you, something was, it was head height for me and I'm six foot. So, um, it must have been something, you know, fairly tall. Um, but I turned around to Ben and I said, did you just say something then? I thought he might have said something under his breath, but he didn't. Uh, so I, I can't explain what that is, really. So it's a bit strange. Good though. Did it sound like it actually? It, it sounded like a woman's voice, if I'm honest. Did could you like make out any words? Or? No, not at all. It was just like a, like which quite shorter than that. Shorter you, than that. Were you filming? Yeah. So. Could it possibly have been picked up? Probably, probably. and I had the um, voice recorder on as well. So. Mm -hmm. Cool. Did you hear anything there? No, well, I'm just going upstairs now. You guys get anything? Yeah, a couple of knocks um, that were unexplained. Just someone just do that? I couldn't explain them. Oh, sorry, Dylan. I heard that. Oh, yeah, it is. Yeah. It's a faint yeah. yeah. yeah, it was so from that fun. area where I heard the knocks. I just heard something from about here. It could have been from this area. Oh no, mine was more of a, a single footstep kind of knock. It sounded wooden to me. Because when I heard it, I was over at Guy Fawkes' table. So it could have been in that it came from over here when I heard the noise. I heard it twice, once when I was sat over there and once when I was stood with Tim over yes. at the monitor. I said to you, did you hear that knock? Did you hear that knock, yeah. And that was from this end of the building. Yeah. So well, here I am in the bar area. Uh, I'm sat at Guy Fawkes' table. There is the infrared CCTV camera, which Sarah is watching over there. Now, that, that is James the First. And obviously we know the connection with James the First and Guy Fawkes, because it was Guy Fawkes who was part of the plot to blow him to smithereens in the Houses of Parliament. So I'm going to use James the First here to see if we can get some kind of reaction from whatever might be associated with this table. I'm not saying it's Guy Fawkes, but it, you never know. So we're going to use that to try and get something happening. What was that? What? I heard, I heard something after the radio went, but... The tap just came from the bathroom, I'm not even kidding. Did it? Oh, yeah. Uh, uh, up until about two seconds ago, there was not a lot going on here, but Ben's just heard a tap from inside the toilets. And yes, we mean a tap in sound, not a tap as in water. So come on, whoever is here, show me what you do to this table. Move the picture of James the First. Guy Fawkes, is it you? Are you associated with this table? Is this your beloved table? Dates back to the 1500s.
access to a EVP session. Is there anyone here sat at this table with me now? If you are here, can you give me your name, please? Are you connected to Guy Fawkes? Or are you Guy Fawkes? And what do you think of King James I of England? Definitely for me. The sound kind of kind of sounded like if you were to, well, maybe even something like a tap on the glass or something. Okay. But like a kind of hard one, not just like a little soft tap. Yeah, what like a kind of like that. Just louder. Yeah. So not quite like that. It was like a nail tap. Okay. Down with that, you heard stuff. Yeah. If I can get out, I'll go and have a look. Just do me a favour. What? You know, when you did that then, when you were getting up, did, were you shining your camera over there? Yeah. Just do it again, just sort of like shine it over that way. Wow, what's up? I just saw, you know um, where the um, standard lamp is? Yeah. Just there, on, like in that area, and it just looked like... Over there? That way? Yeah. It just looked like there was something moving there, but there was nothing there, but it looked like there was something moving, if that makes sense. But I don't know if it was the light. Anybody here? Move the glass for me. Go on. Okay, if there's any spirits here and you've uh, recently made a noise in the ladies' toilet, then please we ask you to repeat that if you'd be so kind. See if you can do it for us again. Ben heard it. I didn't hear it myself. Not saying he didn't hear it, but uh, yeah, please do it so we can both hear it. That'd be nice. Come on, Peggy. We're still by the fireplace. Let me know you're here. Here's my glass. Are you going to move it for me? Move my glass? Go on then. Move it. I'm sat in your chair and I'm not moving until you move my glass. And I just got the fright of my life just then. Uh, as I was pointing this camera towards the bar and the mirrors, at the back of the bar, I could have sworn I saw something walk past in the mirror. Which is a bit strange. Huh? What did I see? I was filming the bar and talking about Sam's mum having her hair pulled and head touched and whatever. And as I turned the camera to look at the, the bar, well, I didn't, the camera was already at the film at the bar. Um, 
it looked like something uh, in the mirror walked behind. It's, it's weird, I can't explain it. It was basically like somebody had walked in the mirror, but I couldn't see them anywhere else. That don't make any sense. Have I just seen you walk past that bar? Do it again if you were. As we walked into the room, um, literally just closed the door behind us, uh, Jane was filming, and I was stood about here to one of the chandeliers, and something hit my head, something fell on my head. Uh, it felt like, it felt like a string, or something like that. I could feel it in my fingers. Really? Yeah. Um, I felt, cause I reacted quite severely, didn't I? It's like something to touch me. I felt it in my head and I felt it in my fingers. But there was nothing there. Now, what there was on the floor were just a couple of tiny shards of glass. But how they can come from the ceiling, I don't know. So I think that's totally unrelated, but right. that's the only thing I found on the floor. Um, but there was something in my hair and as I say, and I felt it, it in my fingers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it felt like a piece of string and it was not the, the shard of glass was 10 mil long, yeah. whereas what fell in my fingers was much longer than that. That's so strange, isn't it? But there was nothing around. No, because we put the torch on. Put the torch on, I had a look around, there was nothing there. But I, I definitely felt it in my hair. And and it wasn't my hair that I felt in my fingers, it was it something a different. Spider, was it? No. Well, there's, there's nothing around. There's nothing. There's no cobwebs in there, nothing. Right, okay, what we've got then is we've looked through the footage and we have got a few incidents that took place, so I'm going to play them back and get your reactions, see what you think. Ben. While she was filming the photo footage over there, I heard like a twang of metal over here, like someone flicks a metallic thing, or hit it hard, but that doesn't sound at all right and neither does that, that's way too soft, and this is... Not, no, still not the right sound. It sounds like someone here with a lot of force and it definitely came from this area. So what do you think that was at the time? Well, it's, I think there was a radiator there or something similar and it sounded like something banged on that. It sounded like if someone was to throw like a screw or something at a radiator, something similar to that. Okay, one for you now, Phil. This is when you heard the voice, if you remember, going up the stairs like a whisper. Did you just say something? No. Are you sure? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can't quite hear anything on, on that audio clip. Um, but, I mean, you know me, people know me who's watching this. Um, I'm not going to say anything unless I'm sure I heard something or something happened. And I'm, I'm just, I tell you now, I definitely heard something. Just as I got to the top of those stairs, it was like a whisper. And it, it occurred literally just a few seconds after me asking for evidence of whoever's haunting the place to make a noise. Um, but I'm just a bit disappointed that you can't hear it properly on there. You can hear it if you have the headphones. Right. Yeah, it, okay. it, it, you can hear that there is something there, so. Okay. Was, was uh, it female or male? Um, it, I, I thought it was female. That makes it more interesting then, because obviously Ben was in the room with you, so it yeah. being a yeah. male voice. Yeah, it know. definitely wasn't Ben, um, because Ben would have been down behind me to this side at the time, and I heard it this side right. when I came up the stairs. Mm. So. Mm. I remember seeing that on the CCTV when I was watching in the bar. I remember saying something along the lines, so I looked something spook Philly. Mm. I said it's strange because normally you're, not a lot happens with yourself. Yeah. I said something's got him, so something must have happened. Yeah. Mm. I said, um, like I say, it's just a shame the audio's not that clear. Yeah. Mm. Right, so this one is me and you, Jane. Now, obviously, I've seen this footage and I've 
heard it, it's when we, if you remember going into the toilets and we hear a noise. See what you make of it. It is a bit of a, a comedy sound for the area that we're in, so. Scary creaky door. Yeah, sure. Mm -hmm. Because of all the different, um... What's that? What was that? <laughs> What's that? What was that? Sounds a bit stranger inside, doesn't it? But yeah, it's, it was there though. It's there. Yeah. It, it sounds different on camera to what I remember though. It didn't sound quite as comedy when it happened, but it's, no. it's twice. And I don't think it's noise pollution from the rest of the... Let's be honest, it sounds like a fart. It does, it does. <laughs> it does yeah. I didn't want to say that. It does. <laughs> it does. It does. It does sound like a fart. And I could honestly say it wasn't me. <laughs> it wasn't me. And I wasn't even in the room. <laughs> <laughs> but the irony is... It's, toilets yeah. as well which yeah. is, is quite funny but um yeah. we couldn't hear the rest of you from where we were at that point and there wasn't a lot of noise going on so once again is it a door is it a, a, the cubicle moving i don't know it's a strange noise it's a comedy noise it didn't come from any of us mm. but what it did come from i don't know mm -hmm. okay right okay so final clip uh, this one is for you, Tim. I think. Sure, and I, was, I was looking on the camera, I was looking at you, and I've got the door in that leads through to the corridor and the other family room. Yet when I flicked to the camera, there was no one on the camera in that vicinity. So wherever they are, they're on the, up the steps and on the upper level in there. But it doesn't add up why I saw something through the door in that room when there was no one in that bit of space. Yeah. So what was that about? You saw a figure? I, it wasn't a, a definite figure as such, it was more, um, I don't know, more described as sort of like a, a shape or just something black. That mm. Just something caught the eye and you know, and I clocked it, I thought, what the hell is this? It's where... Yeah, it's spot again. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Where, where the apparitions have been seen yeah. by yeah. those other yeah. people with the band. Yeah, that's it, yeah. Yeah, in that area. But I remember clocking it that day, it was because I knew the uh, Ben and Phil was out of the way. Yeah. And I could see where they were, and I thought, well, you know, what the hell was this? Right, okay, so obviously um, the thing that brought us initially, and Jane, that you picked up from this place, uh, was the photograph. Yeah. So we'll have a look at this. Okay, so this is the photograph which originally brought us to the inn, uh, taken by customer before the pub had the refurb so i believe was featured in the local press yeah that's right um i spoke to the, the photograph owner normal night in the pub took a photograph on their phone nothing at the time that they could see afterwards ghostly hands okay so obviously we did a recreate with our photographer dale so i'm just going to bring that one up on the screen so we can have a look and obviously different background fill in the mirror there and then you can see the hand there. Yeah, so absolutely. I think that without doubt we've proved that that was an incidental mm -hmm. hand shot that somebody put the hand out at the time. When we look back at the original photo, it looks like somebody's like that, trying to warm the hands on the fire. Yeah. And they just have to take the photo at that very moment where they've gone like, I moved the hands away. Which you could see, and that's what Dale made me do. Yeah. He just basically... And it's identical almost. Okay, so that's all of the footage that we've got to show you. So based on the evening, on our time that we spent there, on what you've seen here, what do you guys think? I mean, Ben, what do you think? Haunted? Quite possibly. I think that what's been reported previously, the, the things that drew us there um, are more convincing than the evidence we got on the mm. night. Am I ruling it out? No, because I think there's far too much um, that other people have seen independently, mm. I think it would definitely warrant further investigation. Right, okay. Yeah. What do you think, Tim? Yeah, uh, the, the overall question, and you know, are you haunted? I, I would like to think that yes, it is. The good thing is, is that it's not investigated before and uh, that it's sort of new to people that are you know, like us and we're going in and seeing what's what but the fact that we got feedback from the owners and they reported this and that and then we've had, you know, well, not the same things happen but things go on then I'd like to think it is. So what do you recommend, Phil? Um, it's a tough one. Uh, tough one's cool, really. Um, it wasn't, I mean, we have got little bits and pieces but there wasn't an awful lot of solid concrete evidence, if you like. Um, Again, we have got the, the word from 
the people that work there and the the, the, you know, the customers and things like that. Um, I'm I'm going to say it's possibly something going on, but I think it would yeah. require further investigation. I think we all feel a little bit like we're all sort of on the fence with it because mm. um, me personally, I think out of everybody, I'm the only one that really didn't have anything um, happen. Um, I think that just sort of, I'm one of these people that I have to sort of see things for myself to mm. believe it. Um, however, because of what's been reported there by the owners and like you say, customers that are coming in, I'm, I'm, I am very much like that. I'd like to think it is, but me personally, a bit more proof I'm very quiet now. Yeah. yeah.